Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Welcome back to hopefully another extremely exciting episode. We're actually going to continue and bounce off what we just discussed, uh, which is taking over a property subject to, and we're going to go into some numbers and some dynamics so it's a little bit more clear. And thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today uh, and helping us make this the number one podcast in iTunes. We're very proud of that. And we're also very happy of, that you are leaving great feedback and continue to leave great feedback and nudge, nudge, wink, wink, share this with as many people as possible so we can help as many humans as possible achieve financial independence through cash flowing real estate, never using any of your money or credit, doing it with very specific ninja skills, which I've developed over the last 21 years. And I'm joined today with Gabriel Araish out of Montreal and Frank Galuccio out of Toronto. And we're looking forward to helping and serving you today with a better understanding of how to profit from subject to uh, financing. If you have not yet um, listened to the last episode, please do uh, stop this episode now and listen to what we just did, because it's going to explain exactly what buying a property subject to the existing uh, debt is, and it's going to be a lot better to understand that first before you listen to the rest of this, this episode. So stop if you have not heard the last one. If you have, let's go. Gabriel, you first. You first. Wow, that's a blessing. Thank you for having me once again. Enjoy this podcast. Enjoy being with you guys. Um, so, oh, thanks, Gabriel. <laughs> Golly Willikers, so much love in the air. So we've uh, in the last episode we we spoke about uh, subject two and how to step into someone's debt uh, on a on a four unit or less using the Garn Saint Germain Act. So. You know the question would be next is so so why would we do that? Why would we want to do that? Uh, so let's uh, let's take a a property that someone's bought for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. They've put twenty percent down, so that's thirty thousand dollars, and so they have a mortgage of one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Now, if we look back at the two thousand and eight crash, you know we saw properties go from one hundred fifty to one hundred or even lower in terms of value. Uh, so let's fast forward to today and and maybe in in the near future. Uh, let's just even assume that there won't be such a big crash or such a big uh, change in values. And let's just say the property's value you know, at that time is going to be 120000 which is what the seller owes. So at that point, uh, they, they have no, they, they've lost their $30,000 in equity. And in fact, if they want to sell, because it could be that they either want to move out for different reasons, but mainly maybe they lost a job and they can't make the payments anymore. They want to move back with their parents, their family, their friends, whatever the case may be. They want to list this property, but you know what? They can't because there's not one real estate agent that's going to want to sell that because even if they sold it for what it's worth, which is what the debt is, there's no money left to pay the, the commission for the agent. And, uh, you know, the agent, you know, is not going to work for free. So this is where, uh, you know, the basically the, the, the juice has been squeezed from the lemon here and all that there's left is, is the debt. And that's, that's where we come in. That's where, you know, subject two comes in. And it's, it's a property that's kind of uh, prime for, uh, for subject two. So now why would we do this? And, and I don't know, Frank, you want to go through the cash flow side of this, but that's when you would get into a sub two. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to add on what you're saying is, is yeah, you're going to have an abundance of people that do want to get out of their property for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, the, the lemon's been squeezed and, and, and pushed on and stepped on and, and it's like squash grapes, man. You can't get no more out of it and they still want to get out. So no one's touching those ones, but that's good because then we have, you know, more for us. So we can go in there with, with the strategy to do subject two, take over the debt. We can even be nice and give them, you know, a few thousand dollars just to walk away and that, you know, for shits and giggles and they'll be happy as, you know, they'll be very happy we did that. But, the big question is, is like, okay, well, everyone's walking away. Everyone's going the other direction. Like, well, I ain't buying that property if there's a mortgage for 120 and it's worth about 120. Why would I buy that property? Everyone tries to get, a, everyone wants a deal. You know, it's just, it's in, it's in human nature's blood that everyone wants a deal. So why would someone want that property at market value? So the way you look at it, unless you're living there, is you're going to be renting that property. So even if you get a property for nothing or you give the guy $2,000 or $5,000 to walk away from his property, as long as the rents are covering the debt service, do you really care what the property is valued at? 
You're not crystallizing your loss. It's like, you know, don't sell one on the, on the lows, right? So if the property, so the market goes, has mic, uh, market cycles. So you got your boom, you got your peak, you got your downturn, and then you got your upwards, uh, position. So just say in, in a downturn, you're, you're buying the property. It's, it, you know, at the 120. So you're doing it subject to, like we explained in the previous episode, you buy subject to little or nothing out of your pocket. It, you, you got it for what it's worth. Uh, but you're cash flowing. So as long as that cash flow, the rents come in and at the end of the day, cover your expenses, your, you know, your, your taxes, your insurance and your manager and, uh, your debt service, then it's okay. It doesn't matter if the property even goes below 120 and then comes back, uh, back and rebounds after two, three years, four years, five years, like it did in 2008. Uh, most of them doubled, if not tripled since then, uh, which I'm kind of jealous because I missed that whole cycle. Um, so, so from a perspective of why would I buy something at market value makes no sense. It's the way you're buying it is what makes it make sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's a lot of sense, sense in there. Does that make sense, <laughs> gentlemen? That little sense had up to dollars, right? I, th- I think Frank's sponsored by HomeSense. It, it, it does. So, so as people are walking away, you're stepping in with this strategy, if you know what you're doing, and you're scooping all these up, and you're doing cash flow, and you're going to get market appreciation. It's, it's going to go back up. It's like you know the market has ups and valleys, and it's, it's, it's going to do that. Uh, so even if you have to ride it out three, four years, it doesn't matter. As long as you don't sell uh, where you're going to be in a loss, that's different. So, But if you're in it for the cash flow, and that's what we're in it for, we're in it for the cash flow. So it doesn't matter what you pick it up for. Uh, as long as your debts are covered, then you have a little Not bit of Not only do you get the cash over. flow, but you also get the tax deduction. Uh, you, you get a depreciation schedule when you buy a property. That's uh, Take the value of the, the building and divide that by 27 and a half. And that's about $36,000 $36, per million. So if you were to scoop up three or four $200,000 properties, the first $36,000 that you make is tax-free. So not only do you make the cash, so all the cash flow, if you plan it right, and you get to deduct the interest payments and, 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 you get all these deductions in your business, because now it's a business, you're, you're, you're not only making more, but you're keeping more, which is extremely important. So the government is giving you some tax incentives in order to buy these things. Now, even if you're Canadian, there's tax treaties within Canadians. If you're Australian, if you're, you live, you know, if you live in Mugadushu, it doesn't matter where you live. It's, it's, you are going to be subject to the existing tax structures of the United States. And then once you pay your tax, you can take that money and do whatever you want with it um, and enjoy a better life. So um, it's, it's a very powerful strategy where everyone is running, as, as both of you have said, you're run, you know, running away from the property because there's no money in it. We're running towards it because we can scoop it up for nothing. They'll just hand us the keys many times or just give a couple bucks just for moving cost, which we can even spread out over time. Listen, you pay, you pay your moving cost and I'll pay you $200 a month until your moving costs are paid and we'll take it out of the cash flow. So you don't even have to give the money up front. There's some creative ways where you can even take care of the seller post-closing. Uh, so um, it's, the, the possibilities are endless. And if you know what you're doing and understand that you're in this for cash flow and this is a great opportunity just to get free property. It's literally a free house, mm-hmm. free house. Just, it's literally free. Take it over, make cash flow, get the tax deduction, have a better life. And when the market does turn again, because it always keeps turning, it turned 10 years ago, it's going to turn again soon. If it hasn't turned already, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, it's, and it's going to go up, it's going to go down, just like you guys said. And cycles. Ride the They're wave. Cycles. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's but even all it if is. it didn't, and even if it never went back to, to, to even a dollar more than that 120, I mean, take the cash flow. Let's just, just assume this thing rents out for $2,000 and that you want to pay off all your expenses, your taxes, insurance, you know, management, all that shit. Let's say half goes to expenses. You're left with a thousand dollars. $120,000 mortgage is, is more or less $650 a month in payments. So if you remove the 650 from your remaining thousand, you got $350 every month left, uh, Every single month, and 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 that's going forward. So, it, three fifty times twelve is about what forty two hundred dollars, give or take. That's four thousand two hundred dollars of net 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 income after debt service in your pocket every single month or every single year. The forty two hundred. So, 
even if 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 the value never goes up, you're making forty two hundred dollars on on zero dollars invested. Or even if you gave the person five thousand dollars to to walk away from that hundred twenty thousand dollar debt, if you're making forty two hundred dollars, that's a pretty interesting return on investment. That's almost a hundred percent. So it's eighty four percent. So thank you. Wow, Marco. That's unreal. Did you do the math before? The- <laughs> I had breakfast this morning. I had breakfast, breakfast the champions. That's the only reason. <laughs> that's a vector. So that's yeah, right. Vector. So eighty four percent. That's that's a that's a pretty sweet ROI. I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, I know you guys get you know eighty four is like really really shitty return on investment for you guys. But for most people, eighty four percent is 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 unheard of. It's probably actually you know they might think that you're doing something illegal at eighty four percent ROI. So. <laughs> Well, it's and again, uh, and ignorance is very expensive, and applied knowledge is power. And the only difference between making a million dollars a month and making a hundred thousand dollars a year, or even ten thousand dollars a year, which is what I made uh, twenty years ago, if I was lucky, I'd make ten grand a year. Is knowledge and application of that knowledge. The more you learn, the more you earn. And this is just one of the many tools that are available. There are hundreds of tools that are available for you to get into creative real estate. And specifically buying cash flow creatively. And that's what we're about. If you love this episode, please like it, share it. I'm excited to help you and your family and as many humans as possible achieve financial independence through the power of cash flowing real estate. And I really hope you get a lot of value out of these podcasts. So please share it. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to see you on the next podcast. Uh, Frank, Gabriel, also appreciate you very much. And, uh, but not as much as the listener, because without the listener, we'd just be talking to ourselves and it'd be really creepy. Thanks guys. Have a great day. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for a life starts by finding deals and it's easier than you think. Simply go to getdealsbytuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to getdealsbytuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.